Welcome everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about generics and performance that surrounds them. We're all probably aware of performance impacts when we're trying to cast, so from one type into another, that is going to be a little bit slower than just working on the type directly. Is generic performance only around avoiding casting? Nope. Casting is the biggest part around it, but there are also some other parts that you can take advantage of. My name is Anton, welcome to the Rock Coding YouTube channel, let's go ahead and take a look at the following samples. The first one is the boxing sample. Boxing does happen, but where? Let's take a look. We have the following situation. First, we are going to take a look at doing stuff with objects, and then we're going to take a look at doing stuff with structs. The current setup that we have is for the models, we have an interface and then a class and a struct that implement the interface. The interface function bespoke to string is just going to evaluate to this value, which we set up at global setup time. For the services that we have, we have three services. We have a service which is going to accept an object, cast it, or try to make sure that it's an interface and call the function on it. We then have a function that accepts an interface and just calls the function on it. And then we have a generic type that puts a constraint around the type and calls the function on it. In modern times, we generally write the bottom two services most of the time. And the top one, we discard it, right? It's an object that's generic, uh, we don't want to deal with this thing. But let's go ahead and see how the performance of these stack up. The results are in, uh, let's take a look at them. We have object that seems to be the fastest, then the interface, which is 0.01 nanoseconds, and then we have the generic, which is, I don't know, to my eye, looks around 30, 27% slower, 0.3 nanoseconds. In someone's world, those are big numbers. Not in mine, though. Let's go ahead and actually grab these results. I'm going to whack them over here. And now we can spend a little bit of time going over why is it actually slower. Here we have the exact replication, so the three services, the models that we're using, and then instantiation of the class and passing it down to these individual services. If we take a look at what is essentially the main function, we create the object, we duplicate the reference, and we pass it down to the do function, we again duplicate the value, pass it down to the function, and then we just pass down the file, final value to the do function, and that's the end of the story on the outside. No boxing, nothing is happening. If we come around down to the object service and we take a look at the call stack here, we load the first parameter, we check if it is an interface, and if it is, we call the virtual function on bespoke to string. All good for now, and by the way, just to quickly touch on the object being a little bit faster than the interface, I've seen them be around the same time, or one slightly faster than the other one, I would say, take this result with a grain of salt, I would say that these two run at exactly the same speed. So this is instance check of it being an interface, to me seems like basically it doesn't do anything. Then for interface service, we just load the argument and we call virtual on it. For the generic service, however, we do some load argument short of something and then constraint. So I don't know exactly what is happening with these two commands, but to me, I'm basically going to take the finger and point at them. I'm going to say, whatever is happening over here, that is adding those 0.3 nanoseconds to the execution time. Where the constrained instruction is something that is going to make sure that the method is going to exist on the final object or value. So if we're passing a class or a struct, if that thing indeed contains the method, that's what we're going to call on it. Otherwise, the struct is going to be boxed up into an object and we're going to attempt to call the bespoke to string on that object. But that is not happening in this case. I don't know exactly how constraint has been implemented under the hood, but I'm going to say that it is being at fault here. The performance degradation is not on the outside. Everything happens more or less the same. The performance degradation happens right over here. If we now come back around to program CS and we take a look at the next example, which is bench struct. So instead of object, uh, we will have a struct again instantiated in the global setup, which is uh, the situation that you're mostly going to be in. You're going to have a controller, you're going to post a struct or something to it, and then you're going to pass it down to the underlying services. What kind of performance can we see over here? 
This has now finished running. Let's take a look at the results. And here they are. Let me just copy them. And object interface are five nanoseconds, which is 500% slower. Basically really slow to if we're passing references around. Why this is happening, we'll take a look at in a second. But then we have the generic service, which just blows the performance out of the park compared to anything else that we've seen before. So why our object and interface are so slow? If we come back to sharp lab and we change the class that we have over here to a struct, we will take a look at what is essentially the main method. And now when we initialize this object before we pass it to the do function of the object service or before we pass it to the do function of the interface service, we box the class up. If you're not familiar with boxing, what is essentially happening is the value that we have on the stack. So if you imagine your memory as it's going down, you have the value right over there. When you box it up, you take this value and you just send it somewhere else in memory that is called the heap and you replace it with a reference to the memory on the heap. And now you can pass down this reference to this service with the call to this do function, the boxing doesn't happen. Again, if we imagine this value on the stack and we're calling the next function that we're passing this value to, the stack is just gonna go down and then you have the new call stack for the function over here and the value usage is really quick. There is no need to have a reference that you need to dereference to go look for the value somewhere over there in the heap. When we come down around to the object service, everything looks exactly the same over here. In the interface service, again, everything looks the same over here. And then for the generic service, everything looks the same over here as well. So the main performance improvement that we're reaping over here is indeed avoiding boxing when we're using generics. Even though the value type implements the interface, it is still going to get boxed up. So when you're working with structs and you have some kind of service, you can get an incredible performance improvement as we can see here by just passing down the struct to the service that is generic and is still constrained by the interface. Where you would think the same optimization isn't actually going to work if you have a reference type due to whatever malarkey is happening down there. Let's put this over here and we're going to close this program CS and we're going to come back around to generics list. And we're just going to remind ourselves that even though we have just seen really, really minor performance degradation with using a reference type against generics, that is because we're only attempting to perform work on it at that one single point where we're trying to do this constraint instruction, okay? Most of the time, you're gonna be iterating over objects many times, many objects, uh, things are gonna be all over the place. So if you have a, something along the lines of this, where you have an array, array list and you're trying to do work on objects rather than using generics just because you've seen this small optimization in this single instance, you're going to get massive performance degradations. And this is not even accounting for the performance degradation that you're going to see when you're actually going to get the object value and you're going to have to cast it to the original type. So the result that you've just seen from the boxing example, make sure that you don't just go follow it blindly and stop using reference types with generics. Because as you will see with this service example, if we still have an interface based service or a generic based service, and we have this implementation for an I calculator, most of the time when you're performing some kind of calculation, you know, you're going to do a lot of work once you've actually acquired this generic and these two services, they're doing quite a bit of work or we're going to imagine that they're doing so. The performance difference that 0.3 nanoseconds is almost invisible in the grand scheme of things. Now let's take a look at something that's called call path elimination. If we take a look at the following example and the services, so we have an object service and then we have a generic service. In addition, there is also a direct service. So there is a class with a function that has a parameter, we're not using it, but it just returns a value. We then have a generic service with a couple of generic functions. So based on a type, what all of these functions are really doing is whatever type we have over here, we're trying to recognize its type and we're trying to compare it. We're doing the same here and we're doing the same here. And then for the object service that we have over here, we're doing exactly the same. 
If we come around to program CS, when originally measuring this, uh, when calling th things like get type and the is statement, uh, these comparisons, they ran at around the same speed. So I'm only going to include the get type in this case. And then for the generic service, we're going to include get type of and is at the same time as well. So we'll see that it is around the same time. And then we're also going to include the direct service as kind of like the baseline, because this should be the fastest because we're just going directly to the value. And then for the other ones, well, let's go ahead and see. This is now done. Let's see what is going on. So for generic is type of and direct, the as you can see direct just getting the value is a little bit slower than just having generic is or type of uh, this is really nonsense all of these run at exactly the same speed where if they, we have the object get that is pretty slow so let's talk about this why is this near instantaneous and uh, this uh, takes quite a bit of time call path elimination as the project is called or you can call this branch elimination if we call to get type we don't know with a reference type what it's going to be at this point, right? We're looking at this at compile time. What we expect to happen is that we're going to run, we're going to check the type here, we're going to perform a comparison, and then we're going to return the value. In addition, as we already know, if we have a value and we're passing it to the object, boxing is going to occur. Same thing is going to happen here, okay? So we have twofold, we have boxing and then we have an actual if statement that is running. What is going to happen in the case of get type or is or type of? What is going to happen is you're going to have your value that is five and it's going to supply the type of that value, which is going to be an integer and then the integer is going to be placed over here. And the result of this expression, as you can see, is true. Even my ID recognizes this because at compile, we can see that this is always going to be true. So what we're doing is when we're writing code, we are reusing code. So we're still leveraging generics, but now we're also eliminating potential if statements. So in the end, because this is going to be true, the code is going to be optimized to something along the lines of this, just returning the value. Indeed, these, all of these will be the same as the function over here. Let's go back a little bit to make sure that this still compiles. There we have it. And let me collapse this and bring in the metrics right over here. Before we go forward, let's just resummarize what we're doing to achieve these results. First, we're using values. So we're using structs then we're using generics and what we're doing is we're relying on classes or we're relying on information at compile time if you're a software engineer with quite a bit of experience you know there is going to be a trade-off of having things at compile time or having things be able to change at runtime if you have a system that has a lot of code that is leaning on classes if you want to introduce a change, you're probably going to have to go and change a couple of classes. If you have a program that is leaning on objects and information at runtime configuration that you're storing in a database, well, it's going to be a configuration change in, at runtime. So if you're writing services that don't have tons of code, most of the time, those services are going to be leaning towards objects and towards data that is present at runtime rather than code that is present at compile time. If you're writing incredibly performant code, you're opting in for tons of classes, tons of code, but still being able to reuse that code via generics. It's the best case scenario for the performance story, compile time optimization, and still you get code reusability. Let's close all of this. I know this call path elimination example is a little bit dry. We're just passing in a value. It's not real logic. When can you actually use call path elimination in a real scenario? For this, we're going to have factories. We're going to go into program CS and you can kind of see what is happening here. We have a service type definition that we want to pick. So we're passing a parameter to an endpoint. We want to surface a factory and then create a service based on an enum or some kind of other value. 
and then use this service. Therefore, we're controlling which implementation we want to pick at runtime. This is again coming back to the point that you can either lean on classes at compile time or you can lean on objects at runtime. Let's take a look at the implementation a little bit closer. So we have some kind of service. We then have two implementations and we can decide which service we want either by an enum or we have these markers over here. If we go to the factories that we have, we have a regular factory. We're going to accept some kind of service type. So this is an enum. And then we're going to perform some work. Coming back to program CS, this is going to be very quick, but this type is not known at compile time. It's going to be a parameter at a function that is going to arrive through some HTTP call, some pub sub message. The point is we don't know what the service type at this point is going to be at compile time. The story is different for the optimized factory. Here we're asking for a generic type which is going to be known at compile time, which is the case at this point. Let's see what kind of performance we can get here. That is now done. Let's take a look and there we have it. The regular one 0.1 nanoseconds, optimized 0.04 and due to this error, basically it's near instantaneous. The if statements get deleted and we go straight in for the value that it's meant to return. In our case, it is going to be this operation here. Now, the important thing to realize here is that we're talking about 0.1 nanoseconds because this is compile time optimized and the compiler can already see that it's 100 multiplied by 5, it can already bop the two numbers together and you get the 500, the final result straight away. If on the other side, you would be actually constructing an object, for example, service A or service B behind the interface I service, what you are going to be looking at is a difference in performance that you're not going to see or you are going to see it if you're performing billion operations or a second or something ridiculous like that, which you're not, which basically concludes this video. Hopefully this video was interesting for you. I know the optimizations in these videos are pretty much all micro optimizations. The most useful one that you actually can use is if you have a generic type and it is consuming a struct behind an interface. Otherwise, the other optimizations are completely useless micro optimizations. You're probably never going to use them in your professional career. Nevertheless, if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions, I'm probably not going to be able to answer too many questions about this, especially around the constraint variable. But if you have questions, leave them in the comment section. If you want to say thank you, you can also leave it in the comment section. But better yet, come support me on my Patreon. Get the source code. Very, very big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. Your help is very much appreciated. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.